I'd like to share seven surprising underlying causes to autoimmune diseases. Now, the reason I'm talking about this topic is because it's literally an epidemic out there. There's so many people that are developing autoimmune diseases all over the planet. And I'm gonna talk about what I think is going on. Now, the quantity of people getting autoimmune diseases is ranked number three after cancer and heart attacks. Yet there's other reports that show that it, there's more people with autoimmune disease than both of those combined. In fact, the top selling drug on the planet is an anti-inflammatory that deals with autoimmune diseases. So the question is, what the heck is going on? What is causing our own immune system to turn on us and attack our own tissues? That's weird, isn't it? So to answer that question, I think it's not a good question. I think there's a better question because if you look up the underlying cause of autoimmune diseases, it's gonna say unknown. Uh, it could be genetics, it could be environmental. We just don't know, we need to do more research. But a better question to ask would be this, what causes an immunodeficiency or an immunosuppressive state in your body where your immune system is suppressed to the degree that it's non-functional? So this barrier, this wall, this defense of your immune system somehow is lowered to the point where things can then happen and your body can incorrectly tag the wrong thing and end up with a bit of a friendly fire. It's kind of like if, let's say, for example, you had to go to court, right? And uh, there's a jury there and maybe there's confusion and they incorrectly label you as guilty. And now they tag you as an enemy. And then now you have to suffer all the consequences that go along with that. Well, with an autoimmune disease, the same thing happens. Your own tissue is incorrectly labeled, and now your immune system attacks that. And then you have all this collateral damage that occurs from the inflammation that's caused by your own immune system. Now, another interesting question that also relates to this would be, what makes your microbes that are in a dormant state, like for example, Epstein-Barr virus, it goes into this dormant latent stage, and then one day it comes out and it ends up attacking us, right? So the question is why? What's the difference between before and now. There's even a condition where your immune system becomes suppressed and friendly bacteria morph into unfriendly bacteria or microbes that are neutral. They're kind of, uh, they're not hurting you or helping you turn on you. That's called an opportunistic uh, infection where your immune system is taking advantage of a situation. And then the problem medically with these conditions is that they're just managed, okay? They just manage them with more medication like prednisone and then the side effects just to continue. Uh, they don't really know what to do with this condition. Now, what you might know about autoimmune diseases is that they are triggered by certain chemicals in the environment, okay? Maybe toxins, leaky gut, okay? Definitely if you have any type of digestive issues or even thyroid issues. I mean, certain things like bad eating can create holes in your gut that then cause proteins to leak through your gut so then your immune system incorrectly tags those as foreign proteins. And then we have this whole immune reactions. Now, certain drugs can cause autoimmune diseases. Cortical steroids are a well-known thing that can trigger autoimmune diseases. And of course, chemotherapy. But let's talk about the underlying causes that you might not be aware of, okay? And this is actually quite interesting. Number one, excessively clean environments, okay? As a child is exposed to this planet, they're born with part of their mother's immune system. It's called the innate immune system. And then they develop the acquired immune system as they acquire it by being exposed to the environment and interacting with microbes and then developing their immunity. That's why it's important not to have someone be in such a sterile environment all the time because there's no training for the immune system. So it's normal for kids to get sick. So if a child gets sick and you quickly stop the fever or give them medication to suppress it, they never really develop a good immune system. And there's something called the hygiene hypothesis. And they found that kids that are in a sterile environment, they're not around microbes too much. They have a higher risk of getting autoimmune diseases down the road, especially versus kids that are raised on the farm or kids that are around pets or kids that are not in a sterile environment, which is interesting. Number two, okay. I'm not gonna even mention this. I'm gonna just show you the book, okay? The textbook, which is $120. You can buy it on Amazon and you can very clearly see 
um, this connection, which I'm not, I can't really talk about, but there's a huge connection between this topic and autoimmune diseases. And you can research this data yourself, but this book, which I have as a textbook, goes through some seriously credible information on something that's probably not gonna be in the news. All right, number three, infant formulas. Wow, instead of breastfeeding, if a child is put on infant formulas, their tendency to get autoimmune or the risk for getting autoimmune goes up, okay? And I'll put that research down below, which is actually another interesting and surprising thing that people don't connect the dots with. Number four, a problem with the VDR. What is VDR? Vitamin D receptor. There's some good research, which I will put down below, that talks about improving autoimmune diseases with correcting the vitamin D receptor. So vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a very uh, powerful steroid, okay, in the body that is intimately connected with your immune system. There's over 19,000 genes that they have identified with vitamin D. So every part of your immune system needs vitamin D. In fact, vitamin D regulates your immune system, okay? And if you don't have enough, you're very susceptible to getting an autoimmune disease. In fact, I would venture to say that every single person who has an autoimmune disease is low in vitamin D. But you can have a problem genetically with the vitamin D receptor. The term is called polymorphism. And if you have that, you're more at risk of developing these autoimmune diseases as well. And these darn microbes, both bacteria and viruses, have a strategy of blocking the vitamin D receptor because apparently they have the intelligence to know that if they shut that down, the entire immune system is shut down. So you'll see in the next slide what we're going to recommend to improve this vitamin D receptor, which actually even goes beyond just taking vitamin D. Very interesting. Number five, this is a big one, losses, which is a major stress event, okay? When I was in practice, I would always ask a person who has an autoimmune disease, when did it start? What happened just before? I'm gonna tell you, it was 100% of the people that told me this occurred after a major loss in their life, a death, a divorce, a loss of a job, things that are related to stress in general can trigger an autoimmune disease because when you increase cortisol, which suppresses the immune system, okay, it lowers your white blood cells, it leaves you vulnerable and susceptible to things happening where your immune system is misidentifying certain things. And this is why one of the major treatments for autoimmune diseases is a synthetic version of that cortisol called prednisone. But the problem is it comes with a lot of side effects. Number six, antibiotics. Interesting. That relates to number seven, loss of the microbiome, right? So when you don't have all the right microbes in your gut, either whether you killed them or some other reason, you're more susceptible. Why? Because 80% of your immune system is your microbiome, okay? It's, these microbes apparently have a very interesting arrangement with our own cells in that we help them and they help us. And part of the agreement is that they protect us against uh, foreign pathogens. And so we appreciate that. All right, let's get to the next slide right here. What do we do about it? <laughs> you need to beef up, no pun intended, your vitamin D. At least 20,000 I use of vitamin D. Also take the vitamin K2 with it. I have a lot of videos on that. I'll put the link down below, but vitamin D, and I'm talking about vitamin D3, not vitamin D2, okay? It has to be vitamin D3, can help to put back in that uh, regulation of your immune system, okay? Very important. But does that fix the receptor? Not necessarily. There are other things that can help uh, that vitamin D receptor, and one is bile salts, okay? which virtually has no side effects. And the one I'm gonna recommend is Tutka, okay? So take both of these. And as far as the amount of Tutka, I would probably recommend taking one or two in the morning on empty stomach, and then one or two in the afternoon on empty stomach, at least for three weeks. And then maybe go down to one in the morning, one in the afternoon after that as a maintenance dose until you're in, in good shape. Probiotics are key 
Um, now, here's the thing. If you have an autoimmune disease, especially that's related to your gut, okay, um, and you may have SIBO, this might not be an option right away because you might feel more bloating with these probiotics. You're introducing more microbes and you have microbes maybe in the wrong place in your small intestine, or you have some imbalance of microbes that can create an immune reaction. So I always recommend going very slow with these probiotics. I mean, like maybe a, a fourth of a teaspoon, just if you're taking a liquid right before bed, or maybe a a fourth of a capsule, right? Just a small amount because they can turn on an immune reaction. And this relates to number four, reducing fiber if the gut is involved. So if the gut's involved, we have an imbalance in this microbiome and you start putting fiber in there and you put probiotics and maybe you have a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that can just stir up a lot of bloating. So if you don't have gut problems, then definitely take a probiotic, okay? And maybe not worry about the fiber. And of course, the fiber I'm talking about, the fiber from salads, things like that. I would definitely not recommend ever getting your fiber from grains or legumes or beans. And this is why if someone has an autoimmune problem that's related to the gut, they will definitely do better on a carnivore keto plan than something with a lot of fiber. All right, number five, a keto plan, which means you're doing low carb, and you're doing quality ingredients, right? You don't wanna put all that sugar in the system or carbs. You wanna get on a keto plan because ketones in general are anti-inflammatory, okay? We're trying to reduce inflammation. And number six, this is the, a really important factor, fasting. This is how you're going to correct your immune system. There's quite a bit of data on doing fasting and improving autoimmune diseases, especially if you do regular intermittent fasting between the longer fasting, whether you do three days or two days. But if I were you, at least every two weeks, I would do a 48 hour fast and I would do regular fasting. If you could do one meal a day, that would be the best thing you could do, but at least two meals a day. But fasting is going to strengthen your immune system. Fasting is going to lower your inflammation in your body. And of course, number seven, do whatever you can to reduce the stress. We wanna do a stress detox. If there are people in your environment that are stressing you out, avoid them right now. You need to be in a healthy environment. And the next most important video for you to watch would be on this topic on fasting. So I put it up right here, check it out.